Until now, a power berserker build has not really been viable because it's either done too little damage or it doesn't survive enough. But with the changes to the eternal champion trait, now I feel that this build is now a viable version of the power berserker warrior build for world versus world roaming. So we're going to go over the build right now. So first of all, let's look at the gear. I take full berserker armor with the pack runes. Berserkers have always struggled to get fury, so the fury up time from the pack runes are pretty nice. Then I take a mace and a shield with energy cleansing. This is your defensive set. You can take a defensive stat mace and shield there. It doesn't really matter what stats. You can just go for a more defensive set. But for now, I just have Zerker there because I'm not really thinking about it too much. But yeah, like Wanderers, Soldiers is probably better because you're not doing too much damage on this set. It's mostly for CC and defense. Then we have our big damage set, which is the double axe set with the Vision and Hydromancy sigils. So once you swap to your axe set, you're going to be doing a lot of damage and burst. So you want that extra crit chance because the Fury up time is kind of low usually. The traits are Discipline, Defense, and Berserker. We go for the normal traits in Discipline with the Warrior Sprint to remove Immobilize when you use a movement skill and to get some extra movement speed. You cleanse conditions whenever you weapon swap. And I take Axe Mastery instead of Burst Mastery because this build does not really focus on using Bursts so much as going into and out of the berserk mode so we'll go over that in a second here but in defense we've got the full stance set so we're running the defiant stance we're running ender pain and we're running the headbutt and headbutt is a low cooldown elite skill which will trigger the defy pain trait which will create another ender pain so there's a lot of ender pain access on this build and that kind of allows you to survive your aggressive positioning as a berserker which was before now very squishy so you've got the shield master trait as well in here and this will give you adrenaline whenever you block an attack and you will reflect missiles while blocking so in your mace and shield set you've got your shield 5 and your mace 2 those will reflect projectiles which is kind of nice because you also will hit the target if you projectile block or reflect so you'll get kind of like double adrenaline there so you'll get your adrenaline up very fast to be able to use your burst skills but we have in berserker we have savage instinct whenever we enter berserk mode we will gain essentially endure pain and it will break stun you also gain quickness and super speed whenever you enter into berserk mode which is important for later and you will gain Blood Reckoning whenever you enter Berserk mode, which essentially translates your damage dealt into healing, and you will be able to gain stability when entering Berserk mode. Now, Eternal Champion also allows you to exit your Berserk mode whenever you want to. So if I go into Berserk here, I can essentially enter it, and then I can use F2 again to leave Berserk mode. And you can see because of the eternal champion trait that i will gain access to all of the things that i enter it with so i'm going to leave here and i get quickness stability super speed and blood reckoning so yeah it's a pretty good ability for you to choose when you want to gain super speed if you want to catch up to the target if you want to get quickness because you have your axe 5 and axe 5 is a kind of a slow attack but does a lot of damage so getting quickness on that is really important or if you know a specific attack is coming at you and it does a lot of damage you can immediately leave berserk mode and you'll get the savage instincts which will nullify all physical damage taken and essentially whenever you leave berserk mode you get the cooldown up faster so the more you're entering and leaving berserk mode the more uptime you're getting of these mitigations and these boons so it's really powerful the ability to leave berserk mode and the fact that your burst skills are really not that important on mace and axe 
makes it not that bad for you to leave the berserk mode because sure the the skull crack is probably better than the skull grinder in some cases and the eviscerate is not amazing decapitate is pretty good though because it's a longer range burst skill than the eviscerate and it's not as clunky so you have more ability to land it probably so you usually want to be using your decapitate and then what you'll do is you'll land your axe four or something like that and then you'll leave and then now you've got quickness for your axe five there so it's pretty powerful so if i was going to do like a basic combo it would kind of look like this so you go in with your shield four or you bait out a dodge or something like that and then you would land your headbutt and then you would go into berserk mode and then you would use your skull crack or skull grinder then you'd swap to your axe use axe two and then from there you can use your decapitate and axe three axe four then leave with your axe five and get that quickness so that's pretty much the main combo but you can change it up based on the situation there so the utilities i'm using are defiant stance as usual it's kind of the same as your endure pain but it's better against conditions so it affects power and condition damage you got to make sure that you use this at the right time if you use it and no one's attacking you then you don't get healing so defiant stance the timing is pretty important so you want to rotate through your endure pains and make sure not to use defiant stance at the same time as your endure pain now you've also got shake it off so kind of like your condition cleansing on this build is shake it off swapping into your may set and just surviving through those conditions with defiant stance now we've also got sundering leap so sundering leap is also buffed slightly so you gain the ability to get adrenaline when you use it so if i run out of adrenaline i can get it pretty fast because it gives 10 adrenaline and another 10 if it lands and it hit like three targets there so i got just full adrenaline and also while you are in burst or berserk mode it will give you a full burst right because it gives you 10 and the max is 10 anyways so you can use your axe f1 and then you can use the sundering leap and then you can do it again because landing your decapitate reduces the cooldown of it so you can do a lot of damage with the burst and then you can leave and of course get the quickness on your axe 5. Now the headbutt is a stun break that will stun the target. So often what you want to do with the headbutt is use the headbutt and then you will go into berserk mode and entering into berserk mode is a stun break. So it stuns you and it stuns the target but you stun break yourself by entering into berserk mode and then you can do the axe 2 and then you can do your F1. And if you want to stay in longer, you can, but generally the target is going to be running away from you at that point. So you want to leave Berserk mode to get that super speed and then use that X5 to chase them down. So here's how I use the build in a larger scale situation. So I want to maintain my invulnerabilities so that I never am just getting completely destroyed when getting hit by multiple enemies but i see a mechanist here i land my headbutt skull crack them without going into berserk mode and just land my full axe combo on them and this allows me to use my berserk mode to get stability and the damage reduction by going in and out so that i can get the stomp instead of getting interrupted or just dying to damage now that we've got that kill i'm going to reset and look for another opening to go in but it looks like, yeah, there's quite a bit of enemies. And if I just went in there, I'd probably die. So I'm going to wait for a better opportunity to Savage Leap in there. I see one of them goes down and already some of our allies are in. So I Savage Leap in, use my Axe 5, and go into Berserk mode so that I can get some stability. But I get completely destroyed. Luckily, I do land my Defiant Stance and I'm able to get the full health. And I use my Headbutt just to get the endure pain uptime there and i'm able to use my axe abilities on them from behind and they pretty much wipe pushing into us so now we want to go on the aggressive i use my decapitate and the savage leap 
Decapitate is really good in Zerg combat because if you're constantly hitting people, it's constantly off cooldown and you can keep using it and you can get adrenaline so fast because you're hitting people. So now we're trying to get the kill on this next Virtuoso. I Savage Leap and use my Axe 3 to try to catch up to them. And I enter into Berserk mode, but I don't want to get stunned, so I move back a little bit. And I see their Mechanist is low, but I miss my Headbutt. And I'm now by myself, so I probably want to be out now because they're going to start focusing me. So I back off, and now you can see I'm starting to be focused. I'm using my Shield 5 to survive long enough. And now I need to rotate through my invulnerabilities, so I enter and exit my berserk mode i get immobilized but i'm able to get out with the savage leap because it removes immobilize now i've got my defiant stance up and i'm going to use my headbutt next to get the endure pain and as you can see the ability to survive outnumbered is pretty good when you can just be immune to physical damage now you are kind of weak to conditions but you can still survive conditions with your shake it off cleansing sigil and your Defiant stance to just heal you up when people use conditions on you. Here's a smaller scale situation against a druid. Now, normally warriors will counter rangers, but druids can have a lot of self sustain and CC, which can make it difficult to fight them. So, I need to land my stuns when they run out of their cooldowns, and to do that, I need to bait their cooldowns out by pressuring them. So I get taken down pretty low from their initial burst, but I get enough adrenaline from the headbutt to go into my berserk mode and get some counter pressure off on them. I use my skull grinder, which gets me some adrenal health, which is nice to resustain, but they're going to CC me with their natural convergence. I can't really go near them because I'll just get slow. So I back off, use my defiant stance, but I get immobilized. So I have to swap and... We're going to go for a headbutt here. It lands and I can skull grinder them and land my axe burst, but they're gonna CC me and I can't really do much. I do land a decapitate, but we can't really do anything when they're in stealth. So I'm gonna try to re-engage with my shield bash. We interrupt their glyph and I miss my skull crack because there's not really any leap tied to it. So it's one of the harder animations to land. Usually want a skull crack after you've already CC'd them with something else. But I'm getting CC'd again with their natural convergence. I try to pressure them as much as possible, but they're gonna use their seeds to blind me. I still am in berserk mode, so I wanna use one last skull grinder, maybe a decapitate, and then I wanna leave to get stability so I can get out of this CC. And I use my defiant stance while I'm stuck here in this immobilize, and I miss my headbutt, but I use my swap to get out of that immobilize after my defiant stance ends. I miss the skull crack again and I get CC'd so I use endure pain to survive through the greatsword burst of the ranger. I land some decent axe burst here as well and while I've got the quickness my axe 5 is going off. They go into their natural convergence so I take quite a bit of pressure and I'm forced to use my defiant stance to get some health back. Now I try to chase with my savage leap and I land a really huge crit combo from my axe. And I'm going to try to use my axe 5, but I don't have the berserk mode entrance or exit to really give it any modifiers. I almost land, I land my headbutt, and now I'm able to go into skull grinder and my axe burst with the decapitate. And I can use my axe 5 here, but I'm getting slowed and they're really low and I land my axe three and you can see that they're downed. So that is how you play the power axe berserker. If you like this content, then like the video. If you want to support me, then do so by checking the links in the description, by sharing the video or by becoming a patron. I thank anyone who supports me in any manner and I will see you all next time.